What's up, guys? It's Damp. First of all, thank you very much for your patience over the last few weeks. Um, sorry it's been so long since I've updated a video, or uploaded a video, rather. But uh, uh, hopefully we should be good to go for probably releasing about one a week, right around that cadence through early 2017. I don't really have a ton of content left to make about DD, so kind of stretching it out. And on top of that, I've been putting a lot of my efforts into helping um, finish the spreadsheet. So I got a guy named Spider. Um who's helping us finish the spreadsheet and update it prior to um, the DLC. So I've been putting a lot of my effort into that and then streaming live also. So um, I will be doing a live stream that you'll be seeing another video come out shortly uh, where I'll be just really taking DD questions and, and walking through some DD stuff. So in the meantime, let's talk about the bounty hunter and move forward with that. So um, let's move on. So... Talking about the bounty hunter, obviously he's in the top top half of the heroes that are available to you currently. Um, in my opinion, he's probably one of the top five. Um, in looking at the bounty hunter and kind of where he, where his pros are, would be his amount of damage that he does for sure. Um, he has really, really, if he crits, he can really hit hard, guys. I mean, you know that by now if you're here watching the video. Um, he has a ton of potential to be able to do very well in boss fights. And he also can do pretty well with scouting ability. And although he's not, in my opinion, the best scout or the best person to use for a scout, um, he's a solid all-around character. Um, he has the ability to stun, and his stun is pretty reliable. Um, and overall, he's not, not too squishy. His dodge isn't too great, but he can get you a dodge or two throughout the dungeon. So he really doesn't have a ton of flaws, but he does have a lot of really good strengths. So we'll go through and kind of talk about where uh, where to utilize him to really get the most out of him. So um, first of all, who does he pair well with? So because he is a marked damage character, and that's where he primarily gets a lot of his damage from, um, he really pairs well with obviously an occultist, um, a hound master. Those are really two of the better pairs that he has. But he can, even without anything being marked, he can still hold his own. So don't feel that you just have to use him in that particular capacity. Uh, you're typically going to run him in slots two and three. Uh, but he also does okay in slot one if need be, although he's not very tanky. He doesn't have a lot of prot. Uh, typically, he's not going to have... He's not going to be able to take very many shots if you were to put him up against the tree branch um, smackdown move. So if somebody's hitting you with tree branch, you're getting a, a one or two shots and he's done. So he may get hit once and put on death's door. So he's not an ideal frontline tank. Um, not that tanks truly do exist in the game, but that's a topic for another another day, in my opinion. But um, in the front line, the second line, he's okay. Um, but realistically, slots two or three are truly where he belongs. Um, and his preferred targets, one of his minuses is that he really can't hit back row. And somebody's going to say, well, he can mark a back row and he can pull from the back row. But in my opinion, the pulls are a waste of an attack. And again, that's that's the topic for another day. But if you can avoid pulling, uh, you're really uh, amplifying your damage. That's why I typically recommend bring somebody who can hit the four slot, and then you don't have to waste a turn on pulling somebody to the front. Rather, you just attack every slot that you can to save a turn. But everybody has different schools of thought on that, so I digress. So moving on to where he is typically going to put out the most damage. So one of the minuses to him is that he does not do well on the third and fourth slot. So he's great at the first and second slot, which means he's he's really good at, at bosses and size two monsters, which we'll talk about in a minute. But primarily he does best at hitting the first two slots. He can still hit the third slot. But if you look at his main move that you're going to be utilizing, it only hits the first two slots. You get amplified damage from finish him here, but only if the target's stunned. Odds are if the target's stunned, that's not your primary focus, at least on that turn. Um, so I will say that if you're bringing him, you definitely want to bring somebody that hits the fourth slot. So when we talk about 
you know, who does he pair well with that would make the Hellion a pretty good pairing because she can Iron Swan and probably eliminate fourth row. And you could stun third row or flashbang it to shuffle it forward. Um, but those are a few ways that you could tackle that, that particular weakness of his, I guess you would say. Not completely... This is what um, a lot of people say is that if you can't hit the third and fourth slot on some characters that they're worthless even if you can stun them and that's not true. You just have to make sure you have the right party composition and that's all. So um, in looking at the camping skills and the combat skills, so we'll start with combat skills. So looking at the combat skills, collect bounty is a must take. Um, mark for death, excuse me, is not always a plus uh, a must take. You could train, change this off for uppercut, which I have in the past. Um, in my opinion, that's that's not a bad move, is to get the knockback and the stun, because sometimes you can shuffle their party to a point where they can't do anything. So if you're bringing a Houndmaster, um, you don't have to bring Mark for Death. It just depends on how you're going to utilize your party. Standard, um, I'm going to bring it, because you never know when he's going to get the first move versus the Houndmaster, whatever. And if you need to attack something that's got prod, especially if it's a boss, you want to hurry up and get that mark over with to begin to deal the damage. So um, you don't always have to bring this. But if you notice here, this is a level 6 character, so he's a legend level character. And I don't have Hook and Slice, and I don't have Come Hither and Lock. Now, everybody has different play styles, but like I was saying before, I don't really feel it's that valuable to pull people forward. Um... And I really don't think that... I think this needs to get a buff, first of all, but in looking overall, pulling somebody forward is a waste of a turn in my mind. You could have brought somebody along that can hit the fourth row instead of you having to, to worry about that. So um, I'm skipping Come Hither, not bringing it. Uppercut, I'm changing out for Mark for Death, typically, or sometimes Finish Him, just depending on the party composition I'm bringing. But uppercut's really only there for stun purposes and to shuffle the targets so that maybe you move somebody from the front row to the third row where um, now they can't do a devastating attack that they could have previously. Or maybe they'll pass now, which does happen from time to time. So uppercut's an option. But really, these are the four you're going to bring. So you collect bounty, mark for death, flashbang, and finish him. That's what you're typically going to run. Um, your, your rotation usually is going to be determined by the party composition you're bringing and when he is swinging so or when he is attacking because typically with his speed unless you're buffing him for speed you're not going to see him go first or second usually he's third fourth fifth if you're including the enemies in it so um it, it really what you're going to do first is just dependent upon the party you're up against and the party you're bringing with you but I would typically start, if it's a boss fight, I'm marking something, and then he's swing and collect bounty if it's in the first two rows. For sure. Because um, this is where he truly shines, is collecting the bounty. So he's great on boss fights. So when talking about that, let's look at the camping skills that are specific to him. So scout ahead, this is kind of situational. Um, as is tracking, just depends on the party you have. These aren't necessarily must-takes, but the must-takes are plan takedown, and this is specifically for boss fights. And uh, Montel Jordan's This Is How We Do It, which um, is a really, really strong buff for him, again, especially on boss fights. So um, paired up with a man-at-arms, he can be buffed, I mean, like you wouldn't believe, to be able to really put some hard-hitting crits on some of the bosses. And um, he hits once or twice, and that boss is 60 to 80% of their health or down, if not more. So those are the camping skills that shine. I always bring in Courage if they don't have four really good uh, camping skills, which hardly anybody would have four really good camping skills, just depending on the situation you're in. But Tracking and Scout Ahead are situational. These are usually for boss fights is when you're going to bring them or when you're going to utilize them. But this is how we do it. It's useful pretty much every time. Pretty much every time. So, um, I'm taking a look at quirks, and then we'll move on to the trinkets. So, in looking at quirks and some of the ones that are really strong for him, um, Deadly's obviously good, Slugger's great, um, Precise Striker and Slugger are really must-takes. Uh, on Guard is also another option that you'd consider that's good really for everybody, but um, Precise Striker and Slugger are the two god rolls that you would want on 
your bounty hunter. That is really, really, really strong. And then from there, it, it kind of depends on your play style and, and what you want to utilize. But those are ones that would be really, really good. If you got those, those would be amazing to have. Um, coming down and looking at the trinkets, there's a lot of different trinkets you can use on him. You can play him a lot of different ways because he's, he's not quite utility like the Grave Robber because he hits so hard. Um, you're usually going to favor melee trinkets, but he's not a bad scout too. But these are two that are solid. I didn't put the Ancestor's Pen in here, even though that one's really good. And I'm going to explain why. So I put Surgical Gloves because, in my opinion, it's one of the top three trinkets in the game. It's amazing for any melee-based character, especially one that can do, um, you know, 7, 8, 9% crit on a move. That's really, really strong if you're adding the additional 5% crit. And then on top of it, you're getting accuracy. So what you're losing is move resist and debuff resist. You also lose move skill chance here with the wounding helmet, but you're not trying to really move anybody unless you're bringing uppercut. You are trying to move somebody a little bit with shuffle, but it's not the end of the world if you if you don't shuffle with flashbang. It's not gonna you know kill you. If they're stunned, they're stunned and, and go with it. But wounding helmet's a good option. Unless you do want the ability to move something, then you'd have to take this out. But the reason I'm bringing this is because there is no negative um, impact from the plus 10% stress. I can't stress, no pun intended, enough that by having trinkets that do positive stress to your characters, how much gold that can cost you in the long run. So I try and avoid those at all costs, ones that are going to give my party additional stress. So these are two I'd go with. I mean, Feather Crystal is another pretty good option to give him some additional speed. Um, the Ancestor's Pen obviously is great. Um, it, the map, if you have it, is good. I mean, there's a lot of these that are really solid guys, but it, essentially what you're looking for is you're looking for stuff that's going to give you crit, and that you're looking for stuff that's going to give you melee damage or damage overall. So um, that's really what you're looking for here. Um, and really to wrap it up, as far as diseases go, rabies... Uh, can be something you'd want to consider. He doesn't suffer from accuracy penalties to the level that the leper does. He can miss from time to time, but um, the surgical gloves actually is giving you plus five accuracy here if you have them. Um, so rabies you can actually deal with for a while if you've got it. Uh, I wouldn't take the fits, but rabies is something you can consider, especially bringing him to a boss fight with rabies would be pretty beneficial because there aren't a lot of bosses that really have a ton of dodge. So. Um, that wraps up the Bounty Hunter. That's one I owed you guys. So again, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry for the delay. And uh, thanks for all the support and the views. Thank you so much for all those. So um, if you check me out on Twitch, maybe I'll see some of you guys live. I really appreciate all the nice things you've said when you've come in and said thanks for the videos and stuff. So I'm going to continue to make content for sure. Um, uh, just let me know what you want to see. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See ya.